Let's spend a little time now and start talking about hypertext links, which is one of the core components of the original purpose of a hypertext up marker, markup language or HTML, and that's the ability to display text and to redirect people or someone who clicks on a particular link to a different location. Either that location is on the same site, you're going to a menu item on the same page, or you're redirecting them entirely to a different site. So the first thing let's do is let's take a look at the basics that we get um, from a HTML A tag. And an A tag is what is used for a couple of different purposes. The first purpose we'll use the A tag is to create a hypertext link. So the example that they have um, here is a hypertext link that takes the user back to W3 school. So the way the hypertext link works is you have an opening A tag and the href uh, property or attribute, if you will. So tags have attributes. The href attribute says this is the location of where we want to go. We then surround something with that A tag. Notice the closing A tag here. In this particular case, when visit w3schools.com is clicked, it's going to end up taking us back to that specific page. So let's try their example first. Okay, so notice here's the basic page. We got our body tag. Uh, in this particular example, they forego uh, the, uh, uh, some of the top tags like the title tag. They're foregoing the entire head tag. So again, notice what happens. The text that's going to appear is that text that is between the opening A tag and its property or attribute value and the closing A tag. So it's going to be visit w3schools.com. Here is the link. So when I click on that link, Shazam, it should then redirect me to the W3Schools webpage as it did here. So let's go back and take a look at the example that we have, that we've been working on. We'll come back and visit this. So coming back to brackets and our HTML document that has a Gettysburg address. First thing that I'd like to do is give credit for the uh, text that I have here. And I pulled that out of WikiLeak. So let's go ahead and go to the very bottom of the page, right above this graphic, and let's put a, a credit in here. And I think for right now, we're going to put the credit inside of a paragraph tag. So I'm going to type out um, a P tag here. And I'm going to type out the word credit. Now, notice what I'm going to do here, something we haven't done yet, and that is I'm going to embed a tag inside of another tag. So what I'd like to do is have the credit go to Wik, uh, Wikipedia. Did I say WikiLeaks before? <laughs> um, I'd like it to go to Wikipedia, and I want the word Wikipedia to be the link that takes back um, information uh, back to, or excuse me, back to the site that I had that. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to start off by putting an A and an href. So I have to put an href after it equals, and for right now I'm going to put closing quotes around it here, and then I'm going to go to the very end. I'm going to pull this closing A tag out. I'm going to put it right after Wikipedia, right there. So notice what I've got over here, credit, Wikipedia. If I click on it right now, it's going to go nowhere other than it's going to, it will take me just to the same page and refresh the same page. I have no ahref. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to come back over and I have that page that I originally went to where we pulled off the um, Gettysburg address down here at the bottom and I just simply want to provide a link back to this location so I'm going to grab the entire URL as it exists right here I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to jump back to my code here let's get them both open and right between the quotation marks I'm going to paste in control V right there that complete URL Okay, let's go ahead and save the document and let's 
see what happens over here when I run it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the Wikipedia and see where we end up at. Noticing that it's spinning up here. And there we go. So it's redirected us now back to the Gettysburg Address and it's kept us on the same exact page. So when I say the same exact page, that means that the original web page that I was on, let's hit the back here, with that link was replaced. That original page was replaced. So let's come back over here. Line preview was canceled because the browser navigated to a page is not part of it. So now what I've got to do is work my way back here. Is it going to let me do that or I have to reopen it again? Let's wait for a second. I'm going to wait a computer programmer amount of time, which is about three seconds. If that doesn't work, I'll close that out. Come back over here and re-enable the preview again. Make sure that does work. Should take just a moment. Let's open up that page. Hopefully it will do that quickly. If not, I may have to jump away and come back and figure out what's going on here. Let's try that one more time. There we go. So that's a good um, tool that I just recognized. And that is that lightning. Oh, let's try that again. The lightning bolt is what, um, rather than have to go to file, I can use a lightning bolt and that opens up the quick view over here. So let's go back here and take a look again and review. I can have anything be the caption inside of the text. What determined that Wikipedia displayed here was the fact that I surrounded, there's that same text, that is the Wikipedia text right here, and it's surrounding by uh, surrounded by that ahref that's within that paragraph tag. Okay, so I've got I can't put a paragraph inside of another paragraph, but I can put a variety of smaller components we'll take a look at inside of it. For example, a hypertext link. So you'll notice the word credit is part of the paragraph, but it's not part of the hypertext link. And there you have it right there. So I could also perhaps, um, if I wanted to show the entire link as the uh, hypertext. If that was the case, I could grab this entire URL right here, copy it out, and replace Wikipedia right here with that URL. And now you're going to see the entire URL written out, um, which is the correct way. It depends upon the particular design that you're using and how you're trying to inform your uh, respective users. So there's an example of how we would link to another uh, website. Before I go on, I also want to point out that in this particular case, what I did is I surrounded text and made the text become my hypertext link. But that does not necessarily have to be the case. Later we'll find out, <coughs> pardon me, that I can take buttons and make them hypertext links. Um, I can take images, and let's try that right now. I've got an image up here of Abraham Lincoln. Let's say that I'd like that link to go to Abraham, uh, uh, some kind of a biography about Abraham Lincoln. So I research it out. Let's come back over. Um, let's do uh, Abraham Lincoln biography. Okay, let's see. Just do a biography. See what we come up with. So we've got a biography.com. Let's take a look and see what that pulls up. And I'm not going to dig too deep because I'm not, the purpose of this is not to research Abraham Lincoln, but it's to show you how I can now use a image as a URL. So there is the URL or the hypertext link that's going to take me, or excuse me, not the hypertext link, but the URL is going to take me to this particular page. So I'm going to copy that 
right here. Just copy it out. And now I'm going to go back up to that line that I had my image in. So there's my image right here. So let's go back and take a look at that. So this image is being derived by this little piece of code right here. So what I'd like to do is when you click on that image, I'd like to have it take us to that website that we were just looking at. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to go ahead and create my ahref. So I've got my ahref equals, and uh, let's see here, my ahref is going to be equal to, let's see, index.html. That's not the case. What I want it to be equal to is, let's close it out, is that URL that we just saw. So I'm going to paste that inside here, With classic just like this. With classic four-corner air suspension uh -oh. for a smooth, controlled level ride. Only Ram, America's longest-lasting pickups, have the power to light up every holiday. The Ram Big Finish event ends January 3rd. Well, as it turns out, there's an advertisement there I'm going to have to cut out. Let's see if I can find wherever that is. Okay, I'll be cutting that out of this lecture. Anyway, let's get back. So what I want to do is I would like to have... So what I'd like to do is I'd like to have the image, this image right here, become my hypertext link. So what I can do is take my A tag and surround that image just like I surrounded the text before. So let's go ahead, pull the closing out and put that after the image. So control X and right here after the image, I'm going to close it out. Here. Let me get back to that example that we have here. And now let's see what we've got. Um, Make sure I've got this correct. So I've got my opening H3, closing H3, an ahref with a URL in quotation marks. Close that A out. Surrounding an image tag. And then I close the A tag out itself. Let's go ahead and save this document and see how that's going to work. So coming back over here, notice now as I move across the image, you're going to see the finger showing me that that is a link. And if I click it, it in fact takes me to that bio page. Another method that we could use for hypertext links is to link to a web page in the existing website that we're on. So for example, I've got an index.html page here let's take a look at creating another web page and providing a link from this page back to the previous. So what I'm going to do here is jump back in, let's see, to my desktop. Let's go back to the desktop. I'm not sure why that's not working. We'll come back here. Inside this page, we've got an index.html page. What I'd like to do right now is to create a really quick page that is simply going to serve as a site that we can link to. I can create that page here or I can go back into brackets and let's do it within brackets. So I'm going to do file new. Here's my new page right here and we're going to put some basic tags in here again and because I am lazy I'm going to grab out the basic tags that I have here and before I go on let's change that from nerd supplies to Abe Lincoln, just to be consistent. Can't see it over in the example directly, but it'll be on the tab. So I'm going to grab my basic tags from here to here, copy them, jump back over to this page, paste those tags in here, finish them off. And I'm having an issue here. What's the issue with it? HTML, HTML, head, head, body, body, title. Not sure what it's not liking about this page. Let's see here. 
Not sure. Let's go ahead and save it regardless. Take a look at what's happening with it. We're going to call this one um, about HTML. Save it. There we go. Look like for whatever reason it didn't recognize it. Let's change this to about. And we're just going to put some text in here about. So something H1 and we'll type about me. This is something that we can prove that it's working. Let's save this. And now let's return over and look at it in live view here. See what it looks like. Should just have about me in a hypertext one. What's going on here? Oh, and let's try making a correction here. A blink then. That's what happens when you have a mistake in your code. And let's see what's happening now. So my doc type, my head. Oh, maybe I should have a closing head tag. Don't beat me to it. Okay, is it not working here? Let's try this again. Refresh this one. Okay, there we go. So we got this basic page done right now. Um, it's simply a two web page website. If I was to jump back over now and took a look at Nerd Toms, I'd say I have two web pages and I have this address page. And as long as we're at it, let's get rid of this address.jpg and let's correct it. So let's jump back over to the index page here. And right now, the address.jpg is seen as being in the root level. What I like to do is move it into the images folder just like we see it here. So let's go ahead and copy this out. Let's move down here and paste it here. And I'll have to do one other thing. Okay, I'll now have to come back over and I'll have to move this document back into images. And now let's make sure this is going to work correctly over here. Uh, let's see what we end up with. So we got everything done here. Let's save it. Save all, and for some reason it's not finding the image. So, and notice again that what it does is it's going to place the text in here for me. So let's move on down and find out why it's not finding it in images. Images slash Lincoln JPG, images slash address dot JPG. Uh, let me pause for a second. We'll come back and take a look and figure out what's going on. So the interesting uh, challenge with this was that for some reason, even though I had typed in the exact address, once I deleted that address out and then went back in and typed in the folder, so this wasn't an issue with HTML. This was an issue uh, dealing with the editor here that as soon as I go into images, the editor then found the address page and then it, it popped it open right there. Hmm. So we've got that uh, correction made. What I'd like to do now is to go back in and simply add a link to the second page. So let's just, for the sake of argument right now, decide that when four score is clicked on, I want to go to page two on the same website that web page that I just created. So all I need to do, be it an image or be it text, the way you see it right here, is to surround that with an ahref tag. So let's try that. So ahref equals closed quotes, close bracket here. Okay, then I'm gonna come back over after four score, do a, a slash a tag right there to open it up and I better put my second set of tags here so it identifies now if you take a look within the code for score as being a link and by the way if you're not familiar with the colors of links 
A blue link is a link that you've never visited. A purple link is a link that you have clicked on at one time in the past or history finds it. So it knows that for whatever reason here, I believe that's uh, a purple color. It thinks that I've clicked on that before and it's probably just happened now with testing. So now I've got that surrounded. All I have to do now is put, just like I did with the image, put the path to the uh, HTML document I want to link to. So the HTML document I want to link to is, is about.html. Let me copy that. And now let's jump back over to the web page here. And right where my link is, I'm going to put about.html. So because I don't have a path in front of it, I just have the name of the document. It's going to look in the exact same folder that this remaining document is in to look for about. So let's take a look and see how that page is going to turn out. Let's go ahead and save it. And now I have my four score over here. Let's click it. And it takes me to my about page. And of course, if I wanted to, let's go back to the about page. I could click, uh, I could make a link um, back to the original page. So let's do that. Let's add below this perhaps an h3 tag and in that h3 let's simply type in return home dot 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 like that so I end up with and let's close this guy out here him gone him gone I'm gone and let's look at this guy here and then you'll see I have return home text here and let's go ahead and add an H a href to return that back to our main index.html page so I can do my a href equals now inside my quotes notice how it's giving me IntelliSense here telling me that it sees at this level there's a couple of links that I can go to I'll go ahead and just click on the HTML here and then go ahead and close out that. It's going to automatically put my closing A tag here, so I'm going to cut that out and move it right here. So notice that it's all embedded within that H3, just like I embedded the previous one in the paragraph tag. And notice over here how it says return home. So let's go ahead and save this document. Okay, I'd like to close this one out let's move back to the original index page right here okay and again I want to make sure I saved all just to make sure okay now I'm gonna go ahead and click on the link right here that we created for score it takes me to my about me page I click return home and it takes me right back to where I was Okay. So that's pretty slick. Uh, easy way to link to another site. All you've got to do is go to the page that you want to link to. In most cases, you can simply copy that URL and provide a hypertext link to that location. Now, keep in mind, though, there is a little bit of risk when you link to somebody else's website because you're going to get a missing web page. They can, you're, you're at their mercy when they change their website around. So be very, very careful when you tag somebody else. But also when you tag somebody else, you'll find out that that's important for you within a search engine. The more tags that you have, the higher rating you get, as well as the site that you're linked to. So other sites are going to want to have you linked to them, and you want to have sites linked to your work as well if you want to move yourself up that, um, that search engine um, level in Google, if you will. So one uh, next example of hypertext links I want to talk about, and they're not used quite as much as they used to, used to be, are the uses of anchors. And what an anchor is, it says not only can I anchor to a specific page, but I can also anchor to a specific spot on that page. And to do that, you can place an anchor. So let's say, for example, down here, that I want a particular quote to exist. So maybe I want this third paragraph to really stand out as the third paragraph. So I can add in an anchor tag. So I'll add in an A, and I'm going to do an ID and give it a name. 
In this case, I'll call it maybe be overly creative. Third paragraph, something like that. Okay. Now, technically, I only have to surround one character in the entire paragraph to provide an anchor. So really, if I wanted to anchor it, I could anchor it just around the word but here, or I could anchor it around the entire paragraph, and it really wouldn't make any difference because you're not going to see any results of this on your output. You'll see the results of jumping to it, but you won't see the results of this in your output. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to simply surround, pull that out. Oops, let's try that again. Control X. And I'm just going to surround the word but. I could have surrounded just the letter B if I wanted to or just the comma. Anything within this region that I want to gain focus on, um, I can surround. So now what I want to do is let's go back to that about page and this time I'm going to change things around a little bit. I'm going to tell it not only do I want you to go back to HTML but by me putting a pound sign in here and going back in and adding in the name okay let's go back here putting the name of the anchor in here what I'm telling it is go back to the HTML page or the index page but focus in as close as you can on that third paragraph okay let's go ahead and save this guy okay um, I'm gonna jump back to the index page and let's see if I did this correctly I haven't done this for a while so let's test it out a little bit so I'm gonna click over here I'm gonna go to the four score link which should take me to that page too now, when I click on return home, what I would expect it to do is to take me, focus me down in that location down below, which is exactly what it did. It took me down to paragraph three. It, it normally would try to put the word but up here, but since there's no text down below, this is as high up as it could go. But notice it took me exactly to where I wanted to go and all that anchor is hidden behind the scenes. You don't see the anchor there. So what this is made for is having say for example you have a large document and you want to have an index at the top of the page and you want the users to be able on that same page to jump down below because well let's back over here just because I have that anchor down below does not mean I can't jump to that anchor on the same page check this out so let's say um, let's do an h2 here okay and I'm gonna put in here third paragraph okay and what I want to do is when I click on that text I want it to gain focus as though this is a very large document on this third paragraph so in order to do that I'm gonna put an ahref around it so there's my a href now what I could do is I could type in the name of this document again I could type in index.html but that's redundant won't hurt a thing but really all I need to do is to go to that anchor so I could type in here um, index.html pound sign third anchor or I simply can put in the pound sign and the anchor if I don't give it another page it's gonna assume that this anchor is on the current page okay so there we go let's see how this is gonna work so again notice I'm putting a ahref here let's jump back over to this page and let's see here I think I better save it all because I don't see the changes happening okay and I don't see an h2 appearing above the graphic so I'm going to close this guy here and let's reopen it again. So there's my third paragraph. Now if you look down below here, my third paragraph is in view, but it's not in focus. It means it's not pushed up as high as it can go. But by clicking here, I get nothing. Let's go back and take a look and see if that's because it's already on the screen. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my browser and I'm gonna resize let me get rid of my menu bar here and resize that browser bar 
so that I can't see the third paragraph. More of that responsive type, and now let's click on it and see what happens. It means I don't have it coded correctly. So let's come back and take a look and see what I did wrong. So I've got an A. I like the way those images pop up, but sometimes they can get annoying. So I got my A href uh, equals, I'm taking it to third paragraph, and I got my closing tag, and I'm not sure how that happened. I cut out somehow the ID of third paragraph. So I better come back in and add that back in again. Somebody probably saw that happen when I did it and didn't yell out loud enough for me to correct that. Should have been, oops, try that again. I just want that to read third paragraph without the pound sign. There we go. Probably should have just typed it in. Okay, so now I've got the anchor tag. All I did is put an anchor around the word but. Okay, let's save it. Okay, and now let's try this. There we go. And notice that the but moved up to the top because there was enough space for it to do it. Um, let's go back and show you what it would have been like using the previous example. So if I'm up at the top, let me return back. Okay, click the paragraph. It pushed me up, but it couldn't push but high enough because there's nothing down below this to push it any higher. Okay, so that gives you a pretty good example of the three different types of links that you're going to be dealing with. And and by the way, you can put an anchor around an image as well. So we've talked about putting um, hypertext links to different web pages or different websites. You simply grab that URL and you paste it within your link in your ahrep so I would go out find a web page I want paste it in here that would make in this case the text third paragraph become the link okay we talked about how to use images and here's an example of an image right here that has has been used as a hypertext link what I did is I surrounded I use an ahrep and I created it first with the location of where I wanted to go. I surrounded the image tag and then I closed out the A tag. Okay. Then down below I showed you how I can create a link to another web page on the same site and then we created a anchor tag right here and we just simply put it around the word but. Could have been around anything. It makes no difference because as you can tell over here well, other than the fact that this editor is showing it, um, you don't see anything around but normally. You would see nothing here. There's no output result for it. It's just a destination that a hypertext link will go to. So hopefully this makes sense. Let's take a look at the next topic. Let's spend a moment and talk about commenting out your code. Now, there is the ability to embed comments inside your code, and a comment is something that when you look at the source, you will read it, but it will never output for you within the browser window. There's a lot of discussion of whether or not it's appropriate to put comments within in your code. Why do you want to document something that somebody else is going to look at and be able to take? I personally don't have any problem with commenting my code out. Um, it's going to make my job easier for me and if somebody else is looking at my code down the road uh, and decides to use part of it I'm, I'm more flattered than I uh, am upset because most of the stuff that's intellectual I'm going to hide behind a web page and nobody would be able to take it anyway um, most of the stuff that I would ever do with HTML or perhaps you would do with HTML has probably been done before so you're really not hiding much a lot of times what um, I would like to do is when I go back in and do something special and I want to remind myself how I did it, I might put a little code within my comment just to let me know why I did what I did. In your particular case, what I'd like you to do is get in the habit of going back in and at the very top of your code, and you can put comments anywhere, but within the title of your document, go ahead and add in your name, the date, and the assignment. So for example, here's how we start off a uh, a comment. You'll do a less than symbol, a hyphen, hyphen, and then whatever you want to type in. Okay. 
Okay, and I can continue typing and then when I want to close out my comment and I can have as many comments as I want, I simply do a hyphen, hyphen, and then uh, a greater than symbol. And you'll notice that over here inside my code you can't see any semblance of any kind of comment that exists. This has no impact at all. At all. Notice that what it did though is it did a closing tag and this is something that is unique to this editor. Um, it did a closing tag here and then put the keyword created in here. And we'll talk a little bit about why that is later, but really the close on this is the um, hyphen hyphen greater than symbol. Hyphen hyphen greater than. So really it would be more this. But let's see what happens again when I do it. Notice how it automatically threw in the created tag for me at the end. Um, again, that's uh, again a standard a standard comment. Um, this can be ignored. It's not normal. So, but it's not going to hurt anything either. So, I would suggest then you put in your name, you put in the date, and you the date that you created the assignment. Um, and only you only have to do this on your index page. I'm not going to require you to do it on every page, but I would like the ability to open up your documents and know who created it. So again, looking back at comments, they have no impact on the page. They, they are downloaded, so they do take up a little bit of download time because even though they're not transposed in the browser window, if you come back over here and you take a look at the, the page source, right, you will find, oh, it's thrown off. Now, this is stuff that has been thrown in by um, Chrome, so it's probably not a good thing to look at here. Boy, it sure threw a lot of stuff in. That's not what we want to be looking at. Nope, not ready for us to look at that source yet. But looking back in it, you'd see that this code on the untranscribed source would have this in it. Anybody could see that. Um, so you have to decide, uh, other than what I tell you for the class, you have to do what the value of it is. I'd like to introduce you to a couple of new tags that are not your basic HTML tags, but are going to be some common tags that you might want to use. Um, one of the issues that we have when we're dealing with paragraphs is the spacing that occurs between a paragraph and what happens if I want a simple carriage return or an extra blank line between a paragraph. Well, what I can do is if I wanted to increase that space, and by the way, there's some better ways than I'm going to show you now in cascading style sheets. But if I just wanted a simple carriage return at that point, I can simply type in BR. And BR stands for a break, and watch what happens. You see how it increased that space below? So it's just like reaching up, hitting the carriage return on a typewriter, throwing a break in, and that break can be any place. For example, if I wanted to have four score have a, a colon appear after that and then have a break after that watch this so let's just grab that break pull it out of there and add it right here inside of a paragraph so I can put a break in a paragraph but what it does is in the middle of that paragraph it just simply is though it hit the carriage return just as you see right here so I've got the four score that result right there is the break and then I have n seven years ago fathers brought forth upon this continent okay. so that's the break command I can add it anywhere I can put multiple breaks in if I wanted to there's nothing to say that I can't push information around again the professional developers are going to use cascading style sheets for that but there is a place in the time for the break command now up until recently if I wanted to do bold print, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and take this break out right here before I go on. If I wanted to do bold print, regular HTML had, and I, I can still use an old-fashioned what's called a bold tag. And if I do a bold tag here, and I surround a word, so let's surround and here. Then you'll notice that, and I've got a bracket in here extra, you notice that and comes out bold. And there was another one that was available as well. That was the U tag. 
and the U tag was underlined. And you'll see how I get years underlined. So um, I also had an I tag. So I could put an I, for example, around fathers like this. And then fathers would be italicized, as you see on the screen here. Well, those tags have since been deprecated, and they expect us to use cascading style sheets to produce the same output. But what they have done is they've given us, so oh, kind of met us in the middle, if you will. So let's go back and let me get rid of these tags real quickly here and show you what we've got for now. So I have a, let's get rid of the italics. I don't want that as well. Now, there's two tags that have been in existence for a long time, um, way back since the very beginning of the HTML days, and those tags are the strong and the EM tags, or emphasis tag. So let me show you what they do. The strong tag will produce on the screen what appears to be bold print. So let's try this. And you'll see now that I surrounded conceived, and there is conceived in bold print. And if I wanted to put liberty I, in italics, I could use an EM. Now, here's the challenge, though. Um, although these are usable, and they do currently produce the, the same output, the bold, um, I could do underline, if you will. Here's italics. Really, you're going to want to do this later in cascading style sheets. So the strong tag is here to mark it as a placeholder, but later you're going to go back into style sheets and say, this is what I want strong to look like exactly. Here's how bold bold should be, or here is how emphasized the EM should be. Um, so they're available now. Go ahead and use them, but keep in mind that later we're going to want to probably not use strong or EM at all. We'll probably want to go back in there and create our own unique style, and that's a whole nother topic. Um, a last thing that I'd like you to take a look at is the HR tag. And all the HR tag, we used to call it a horizontal line tag, and now they call it a content separator, and all it is is in fact a horizontal line. So if I came over here and I type in HR and I close it out, watch what happens on the right side. I get this horizontal line that stretches the entire width of the screen and as I increase or decrease it, that line is always going to only stretch the width of the screen. So it's content separator because it's there as a line, in this case, to separate these two paragraphs. We call it a horizontal line. Later, um, you're going to be able to go back in there and do a lot of fancy stuff with this HR tag, changing the different colors, changing the thickness of it. And a lot of people will choose not even to use an HR if they want to separate it. They'll actually go out there and find a graphic um, in lieu of an HR. But an HR is a nice tag. It's a quick, dirty way of separating information out that appears on a screen. It might be, rather than have it there, it might be more appropriate to put it right above below or above our credits right here. So there's our horizontal line going across. So let's take a look at the few tags that we looked at. We just looked at a BR tag and a BR tag is simply a carriage return. It adds in, just like we're going to see here, right in the middle of it, what appears to be a carriage return. Oops, let's try this again. Right in the middle of my document. Let's save this. I'm not sure why it didn't update. Oh, it did. It did. I just didn't notice it. There's war. The BR was there and then we have the we underneath it. There it is. And then if I shorten it, we're still going to have war at the end. So the BR simply is a carriage return. You can use it for spacing. We took a look at the strong tag. The strong tag don't use the bold tag. The strong tag replace the bold tag and it acts like bold does. In this case, it's going to make conceived here 
in a bold text. Until such time as we decide how we want Strong to act, and later we'll make Strong do whatever we want it to do, or we'll create a, a whole new tag that uh, does the equivalent. EM is for emphasis. Notice here I've got Liberty emphasized, and if you look across in my example, Liberty over here is italicized. So EM is the same as italics. Uh, and then the last thing we took a look at was the HR tag, which is a horizontal line tag or the content separator, and that's the line that we have right here. We'll find out later we have a lot of control over that HR tag uh, that we'll do within cascading style sheets. Our next topic is going to include how to place special characters within our HTML document. These are special characters that we can't get to off a standard keyboard. So why, why might we want to do that? Well, again, we need to have characters that we would normally want to put in a document that's not on the keyboard, such as an omega symbol or numeric symbols, such as a division symbol or perhaps graphic symbols like the top left corner of a box or bottom right hand corner of a box. We also have to have the ability to put in some foreign characters, things like yen symbols or the British pound, the euro, or maybe the Y symbol. Also there's unprintable characters that we need to put in here, things that might actually be on the keyboard but we can't use them because they're special characters such as looking up here this left bracket every time I place a left bracket in my HTML it's gonna think that I'm at the start of an HTML document so what if I want to display something like uh, in a heading document let's try this down here let's put a paragraph here oops let's try that again and I want to say something like the symbol is and then I want to put a bracket in here like that now the moment I do that it's gonna think that I'm trying to put a tag in there and it's not gonna work you notice I get this red code here it's telling me that this closing tag there's an issue with it so I have to have somehow the ability if I want to show a bracket to be able to reproduce that with an HTML um, so brackets are those types. I also have an issue perhaps if I want to display a quotation mark. What if I want to put a quotation mark at certain spots? It's going to think that I'm putting in values inside properties. Remember, this href is a property of the A tag, and I'm just passing into it the link page. So there's going to be a lot of different characters that we might want to have access to. And let's take a look at some ways that we can do that. Okay, first thing I'd like to do um, is we looked at comments in the previous lecture. If you go back out to um, the W3 schools, you're going to find information on comments that will tell you a little bit more um, about it. You'll notice that uh, in this particular example of comments, I put it in a single line. But that's not the purpose of this particular lecture. What I'd really like to do is talk about what's referred to as the ASCII code. And I've got a website that I brought up here at www.ascii-code.com. It's a really good website for reference and what I'd like to do is show you what it is. Now the ASCII codes, and today we're using Unicode, but Unicode is made up also of ASCII codes, represent all the different symbols that our character generator in the computer can handle. And some of those are printable and some of them are not printable. For example, you'll notice over here that it's made up of what's called a decimal value, an octal value, hexadecimal, binary, symbol, uh, what's called the HTML number, the HTML name, and then a description. Now before I go on, I want to explain that really everything that happens internal to the computer uh, happens within binary. So when I press a particular key on the keyboard, say at the letter T, then what happens is the binary equivalent of letter T is transmitted through a wire and that's just made up basically of electrical charges. Now, if I was to go back out here and start counting the values from right to left, 
So this first binary value has a value of, uh, let's go up, let's pick this one out because it has nothing in it right now, it's empty. Uh, that first value, if there's a one in it, it has a value of one. The second value here would have a value of two, then four, then eight, then 16, 32, 64, and 128. Now, the purpose behind uh, the rest of these numbers over here is to try to simplify this. Because if I came back in and said, I want you to give me the spelling of hello, oh my gosh, you'd have to come out with the binary of the H, the binary of the E. So what they've done is they said, look, there's an easier way to transpose this. And for us, the easiest way is decimal. Decimal is base 10. When cavemen first came in and realized that they could figure out numbers, they realized they had 10 fingers, and that's why we have a base 10 system is because of our fingers. So the ultimate goal would be to try to figure out how can I convert this binary into a base 10. And again, as I started to tell a moment ago, you start off with values here. That value is a 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. So right here, there's a value in the 1. That has a value of 1. I come up with a 1. Look, there's no 1s, but in a 2 location, there's a value, so that's a 2. This one has a value in the 2 and the 1 location for a total of 3. 0 1s, 0 2s, 1 4. That's how we end up with that number. And if I jump down here, let's take a look at this one. There's a 1. That has a value of 2. That's 4. There's no 4s and an 8. So it's 8, 9, 10, 11. And that's where the 11 comes in. So really what it comes down to is the decimal equivalent, and we'll talk about this more as the program goes on in different classes, is simply a way to simplify binary numbers. And the computer will let us communicate in this decimal value. So let's go down and take a look a little bit deeper. Um, here is a bell value right here. Now, let me show you what that bell value does. That, and it's a non-printable value, but notice here that it tells me that the decimal value is seven. So if I jump across here and I look, here is the HTML representation of that bell right here. And it's not just the HTML representation. This is used in a couple of different places. Um, but if I, in my code, actually keyed that in there, I could cause my cursor to look like it's backspacing. You're not going to do that. Or excuse me, that's going to make the cursor, not in this case, that's going to make the bell ring. The next one down is the backspace, and that's going to make the character backspace. But let's jump down to something that we recognize. So here are the normal keys that exist on the keyboard right here. And these are characters that I could normally type in. But if I wanted to, and here is a quotation mark, because here's one of those characters we said we'd have a problem with. If I wanted to, inside my HTML document, I can either type in an ampersand and a pound with 34, notice where to come from, right here from that 34, okay, or actually HTML gives me a shortcut, and they call it, the shortcut is Q-U-O-T. So either one of these will produce that quotation mark, but it won't treat it like a standard quotation mark. Okay, uh, Let's go down and look at a bracket here. Here is my brackets. So notice I've got the one that we tried to produce a minute ago, my less than symbol, which is ampersand pound six zero semicolon. So if I took that code and I copy it, let's jump back over to brackets here. Okay, let's jump back over to brackets, and now right here where it says the symbol is, I'm going to paste that code in here, and notice what will happen right after that. I now get that symbol appearing over here in my code output. Now, if we go back to that page again and take a look at it, we'll see an alternate way of doing that was typing in an ampersand LT semicolon, so let's do that again. Oops, let's jump back over. So I want to do an ampersand. Notice I'm the pound sign says here comes a decimal number. 
So if I simply do an LT semicolon and click out of it, I'm going to get the same thing. And if I wanted to simulate a particular, may I, I want it on a screen to produce something that looks like a paragraph tag, I could do this. I could put my P in. And then afterwards, if I go back to that table again, I'll see that the other side is the ampersand GT semicolon or this one. Either one will work right here. Okay, let's jump back again. And now I'm going to do an ampersand GT semicolon. And let's get back over to my output. And now now I've produced what looks like a P on a P tag on the screen, but in reality it wouldn't let me produce a P tag. If I had tried to do that, it wouldn't. But by putting special characters in, it did allow that. Now let's go on and talk about another special character that we have an issue with. So right now, uh, let me change this around a little bit. The word of the day is happy. Now what I'd like to do, <coughs> pardon me, is I want to put some spaces between is and happy. So I'm going to start spacing across here and I'm going to click down below here and notice what's happened. Absolutely nothing. And the reason that nothing has happened is that white space, anything more than a single space is ignored as white space. So basically I could come back through here and put a lot of spaces in and it's not going to look any different in here. And the reason is, is ignored all those additional spaces that I had in here as superfluous white space. So there has to be some way for me to go back in and add in those spaces. And there is. It's kind of a pain. Whoops, let me correct that. It's kind of a pain, but it will work. And in order to add additional spaces in, if I want to force them, I can use an ampersand NBSP semicolon. And that's what's referred to as a non-breaking space. That's a literal space to type in as a special character. So if I want to put in four of those, I'm going to copy that and just start pasting. And notice what's happening over here. Now I'm getting the spaces that I wanted before. You're not going to use this an enormous amount of time, but it will be something that comes up and it could be frustrating if you don't remember that you need to use this special character, the non-breaking space. So let me close this out here. Um, I'm going to get rid of all of that. And as long as I'm at it, let's see here. I've got this third paragraph. I'll get rid of that right now. Keep my document looking a little bit better. I do, it is interesting that how when I point to an image over here, it pops that image open. That again is the feature of brackets. Uh, can be a little bit irritating when you're clicking your mouse over the top of something. Could be irritating. But nonetheless, let me get rid of this break that's down here as well. We don't need that guy in there any longer. Now, what I want to do is go back in and I want to find a copyright symbol. Let's say that I want to give WikiLeaks the copyright symbol on the screen and there is no copyright symbol that exists on the keyboard. So what I'm going to do is go back to my ASCII table and let's look around and see if we can find the copyright symbol. And while we're at it, look at all these different characters that I could pull up in here. So I've got a variety of special graphic characters, if you will. Uh, there's my trademark um, symbol. Let's find around in here. There is my copyright symbol right there. So again, a couple of different ways I could insert that copyright symbol into my document. I could either use the ASCII decimal method. Here's the decimal value of it. And if I added 1 plus 1 plus 8 plus 32 plus 128, I'd come up with 169. That's where that number originated. Okay, every placeholder here, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, every place there's a 1, you add that, that column equivalent to it. So let's go ahead and use the shortcut column name here. I'm just simply going to grab that out and copy it. 
Okay, my copyright sign. And before I go on, I had said earlier there were graphic symbols. Here are some graphic symbols that I could use if I wanted to. Okay, a micro symbol. Notice smaller superscript one characters if I wanted to. Uh, uh, one quarter, one half, three quarters, um, the Hispanic or inverted question mark. Again, lots of different characters that I could pull up on the screen. These are all based on the Latin character symbols, and that's what we've embedded in our document is that at the very top, when we went back in and added that character set, the character set that we added included all of these guys. So let's go back to our document now, okay, and let me get back here. Now, first thing I want to decide is, do I want to have that copyright symbol become part of the hypertext link itself? So if I entered it in right here, okay, before the closing A tag, because it's the A tag that identifies that hypertext link, if I inserted it right here, then it would become part of the hypertext link. If I inserted it right after it, it would not be part of the hypertext link. Makes very little difference. Let's take a look and put it as part of the hypertext link. So I'm simply going to paste it right there, and you'll notice there is my copyright symbol. Okay. Now I might want to put a single space in front of that. Let's go back and put a single space. It will let me do that, but anything more than a single space, I'd have to go back in and add that, uh, that uh, non-breaking space in the middle of it. So one other thing, let's go back over and take a look at some other elements I have here. So a really good website to have would be um, ascii-code.com. It's going to show you every different character that you might want to pull up uh, and it gives you even more information than you want. Let's go back over and take a look at the W3C. So the W3C talks about special characters and you'll notice here they're bringing open three different ways and I only showed you two. Here's the first method that you would use if you want to use the shortcut method to pull open a euro. Here is the ASCII value. If I was to dig through that table, I'd find out that there is the numeric value for the euro. And they also are showing a, uh, a hexadecimal equivalent value to pull it up. Now, going back to that table we had before, we have the hexadecimal value, but I'm going to tell you very few people, and I don't know if I've ever, especially in recent times, seen anybody that would place a hexadecimal value in it. It works, you can do it, but if you're going to go back and have to look the character up, you might as well either use the shortcut if it exists or use the decimal value because you have to look it up anyway. Um, but down below here, they're going to give you uh, some other examples of all some of the more common symbols. So you're going to see some of the common mathematical symbols that exist. They're also going to show you some of the Greek symbols. Uh, the same stuff that we had on that previous table. They're just giving you a little bit of grouped elements together. Notice that there's even some playing card symbols, spades, clubs, hearts, and diamonds, if you wanted. Uh, and the last thing I want to pull up is the HTML website. One of the nice things about the HTML website that W3C puts on is it covers everything out here. One of the things that you can do is you can jump over to tags here and I want to see the complete HTML reference and what it does is it shows you all the current and as well as deprecated tags. And a deprecated tag is a tag that you know for the moment you can use because HTML5 will allow it but it's a command they want you to stop using that they'd rather have you use it more likely with a new replace tag or with a uh, cascading style sheets that would do something that that much better. So you'll take a look inside here, all the tags that we've looked at, plus some, a lot of additional HTML5 five tags that we're going to look at down the road. Um, but you'll see in here, here's all the brand new HTML5 tags that exist. And you'll also see in here that the tags that you'll, get, you'll see that are in this, uh, on my screen it looks like a purple, grayed out, tells us that they're no longer supported. Now, just because they're not supported doesn't mean that your browser still won't interpret it. It's probably going to be a couple of revs down the road before the browser actually catch up, catches up 
<coughs> and stops using them. <coughs> and even then, I suspect that there will be ways that we can uh, look at legacy websites, websites that were written in HTML3 perhaps or XHTML, even down the road for another five or six years. But for those of you learning, you certainly want to learn the most current and coolest technologies, and that's going to be the HTML5. So I would highly recommend you get to know this website. Don't be surprised if on a quiz I ask you a question that might cause you to have to come back to this website. Okay. So going back and recapping what we just talked about a little bit, let's get back to brackets. We looked at how to go back in and add in special characters. So the special characters, and of course these are printable characters, so if I put a special character inside a comment like I've got here, it's going to print that, that data out verbatim. If I was to go back in and put an ampersand, um, non-breaking space in here, so ampersand N, B, S, P, semicolon, it means absolutely nothing. Right? It's not going to convert it into a non-breaking space because it's within a comment. The comment's not going to try to interpret what that character is. Okay. Um, let's see. I think we pretty well covered everything for this one. Uh, let's jump into the next topic.